<clears throat> Hello, my friends and truth seekers from around the world. Today, I have two favorite guests of mine and very close soul sister, soul brother. <laughs> this is Elena and Alejandro who are owners and creators of the techniques called vibrational revelations in many previous programs. They revealed to us how they figured out a way to measure with quantum technology, the vibrational measures of humans, of objects, of, uh, of situations, of history moments. And uh, hello, I'm so excited to have you here. Uh, hello. Uh, hello, Lada, thank you so much. And we're so, excited to be here today with you and of course with your community thank you i always look forward to your appearances and elena you are from ukraine originally from kiev well, how are things happening and i and i know i'm sorry to hear what's happening in your country and uh, i remember and i'm so shocked that in 2021 you made the program because i'm subscribed to your vibrational revelations uh, which you do weekly, and you said the vibration of the earth currently for 2022 is going to be 125, and that you discover that all wars start around when the vibration of humanity is 125. Can you tell us a bit more about what you discovered because your predictions became exactly true? Yes. Um, so last year, of course, for the last couple of years, we've been tracking the human collective frequency, right? And, and of course, there is a difference between human collective and the planet Earth itself. And what we've discovered, the planet Earth itself had a really high enlightened frequency of 700. And then right before COVID happened, uh, the human collective, I believe, was 230. Mm -hmm. And then uh, last year, it has drastically dropped to fear. The human collective drop to fear frequency of 100 and then we began to look at patterns because a lot of people wanted to know where are we moving towards and we saw the pattern we looked into this year and this was last year actually we shared that episode publicly on YouTube as well we decided to release that episode so for those people that want to see it it's available for everyone um, and we saw that the frequency for this year was 125 uh, for human collective and 125 is the frequency of unfulfilled desire Right in some cases it's addiction, but it's this unfulfilled desire So moving from frequency of fear to 125 unfulfilled desire So we wanted to, to look at the past world events and not only the frequencies of those world events but also the human collective at that time to see if there was a pattern emerging that was similar, right, to the frequencies, or perhaps not. And what we've discovered was really unbelievably fascinating. So we didn't know that this was going to happen, but we, I believe we said it in last year's episode that the frequency of the human collective looks like we're headed in for some kind of major world conflict or some mm -hmm. kind of war. Some kind of revolution. Right. Some, in a way, right? Yes. So we've looked into World War II, and the overall frequency of World War II was a frequency of 125, but the human collective was also 125, which is fascinating, right? Then we looked at, of course, World War I. World War I event itself was 55 frequency, and the frequency of human collective, again, 125, where we find ourselves today in, the, in 2022. French Revolution. The event of French Revolution, the overall frequency 125, the human collective 125. It will be very interesting to measure the frequency of the Ukraine. war between Ukraine and Russia. Yes, moment, that we haven't done yet, but that episode will absolutely be re releasing. We looked at Russian Revolution. The frequency of Russian Revolution was overall frequency 125, human collective 125. It's unbelievable, right? Mm -hmm. Then we looked at Chinese Communist Revolution. The frequency was 55. And the overall frequency of the collective at that time, and we looked at China's collective because it impacted them, was fear, 100. We looked at Spanish flu. Spanish flu was a frequency of 100. It's interesting because COVID frequency is 55. And the frequency of the human collective during Spanish flu was fear, 100. Exactly where we were last year as a human collective. Wow. So we yeah. dressed up with 25 points, but we've gone into a war now. <laughs> oh my God. Yes, it's, it's creating this... The desire for change. Desire for change. Right? Mm -hmm. In this case, coming from 
a place of fear is definitely a change that uh, incorporates force, right? So something really uh, uh, drastic has to happen to detach us from that which we were experiencing last year. Yes. And at least a feeling that, that there is change and there is, um, uh, you know, we're willing to, or wanting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. Right now we are in crossing the, the tunnel, right? The dark we're, tunnel. we're in that dark period, uh -huh. yes. Now we looked, of course, at global dep depression and global financial crisis. So global depression frequency was 55, human collective was 100, fear. Okay, global financial crisis that happened year 2007, 2008, the frequency was 50. The human collective, again, fear, 100. And then we looked at uh, end of Cold War, 1989. And it's interesting because the frequency of that event was 200, courage. And the human collective was 200. Wow, so it was uh, a more positive event, but it, it made an impression to me that a lot of those wars that you mentioned, their personal vibration, not the human one, of the human collective was 50, isn't that manipulation? They were manipulated. Yes, and absolutely. Mm -hmm. And wow, it's incredible to know. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if that's the frequency of the Ukrainian and Russian war. Yeah, we still have At to least, check it. It is very possible mm -hmm. that it is also 50. Yeah? Right, this will be interesting to see, of course. Uh, that's the one last piece of the puzzle that we still have to, to test for the new episode coming out very soon. I know a lot of people have been asking for it. But yes, I grew up in Kiev. Um, I immigrated to the United States in 1989. So I, I thought I was so far away from it. And then, of course, the first day I found out when I woke up uh, because of this conflict, I, I can't imagine anyone who is not touched by it because it's, it's, it's a political game between political figures and people are suffering on both ends. And this is the one thing we have to keep in mind. It's the loss of human life, which is tragedy. Mm -hmm. So for in this, us, in this case, uh, mm -hmm. between two brothers, somehow, two brothers, right? that's right. And you know, I, I don't know how many people know history. I always grew up knowing that uh, Kiev was the Kiev Rus. This is where Russia originated. Mm -hmm. So to see this conflict, it is truly between two siblings where one is the, the villain and the other one is the hero. And uh, this whole game is playing out. But anyway, we'll be revealing the frequencies of, of both of them well, coming up. People is not the same, the leaders and the people. Of the Ukraine. So, um, I, I'm sure that the people of Ukraine and the people of Russia are on a very different thought than <laughs> probably yes. the person behind all of this and they'll never have wanted that. But Oh, but you had good news. You mentioned to me something. Can you mind sharing it? Well, we did ask because we, you know, of course we want to know. <laughs> we want to know how soon will this conflict end, right? And for us, we tested that by April 15th, it looked like things are going to be much more clear. Oh, so at some point before that date, so we're holding that peace, right? Peaceful resolution for all. And um, we have a chance. Vibrationally, chose that it's a big possibility. <laughs> it's a big possibility. Yes. So that that's good news. So we're trying to focus on that news. <laughs> of course, the repercussions of this situation will, you know, be stay for a longer period of time. You know, the impact on the. And human lives. Uh, yeah, society and the economics and so forth. That takes some time mm. to heal. To right? heal and rebuild. Yeah, and so rebuild, people will yeah. be suffering. But um, mm -hmm. yes. so we're holding that peaceful resolution. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now let, let's go on the other topic that we're going to talk about today, which is uh, Hermes. Uh, mm -hmm. and uh, Alejandro and Elena have measured the fr frequency of the teacher who is known from Egyptian, from ancient history, who was in astrology and in esoteric knowledge. Hermes is the creator of astrology. So this is very relevant for us who are interested in astrology because uh, 
in ancient Egypt history, it's known or, or legends, it's known that Hermes gave astrology. He was divinely inspired and he was actually, there were two Hermes, Hermeses according to ancient, um, it was the same soul incarnated twice, once like many thousands of years ago, more like seven, eight thousand years ago, giving the first <clears throat> astrology and then later on, uh, into a few thousand years, just two, three thousand years ago. I'm not sure when exactly, but this is according to esoteric um, uh, science and knowledge that he incarnated again and again, refreshed that knowledge and gave furthermore. Um, and that's very relevant for us. So uh, Elena and Alejandro have measured Hermes and Hermes <laughs> and the seven principles of Hermes. <laughs> so it would be interesting to hear your revelations. Yeah, this was actually one of the most fascinating things. Well, we're always fascinated by having revelations because we're, we're surprised. In some cases, we're surprised and we don't ever know what to expect. In this case, you know, it, it kind of brought us into a couple of other revelations that we've done in the past. And we'll talk about it because they're very much relevant. Uh, and it also shows something that perhaps ancient scriptures talk about quite often in many different cultures, that there are people that are called avatars or enlightened beings that just come throughout human history to infuse humanity with certain information. And when we read Hermes, uh, this was one of those beings that actually had identical, identical frequencies to two other beings that we've revealed in our in the past in our community and i believe publicly as well so we will give you the comparison afterwards but first we wanted to give you the frequencies and there's a couple of new actually aspects that i don't know if you're aware of that we incorporated since we've done readings last year so this is something new we've incorporated integrity to themselves and integrity to others so we break down the integrity and the other new aspect that we've incorporated is the different levels of intelligence like the IQ, EQ, SQ, and AQ. And they're all based, of course, on the scale of consciousness. It will be a totally different reading than if you were to go and take a test, let's say, and check your IQ. But of course, there's a lot of patterns that we're seeing, so we can also discuss those. So I'll touch on part one, where we'll go through frequencies, and Alejandro will touch upon part two, which will go through the uh, percentages, yes? Okay, so Hermes. And again, uh, we're looking at the scale of zero to 1,000, 1,000 being the highest frequency for the human experience, right? So Hermes incarnated at the frequency of 1,000. It's fascinating. How about, that? How about that? Born at the frequency of 1,000. And his overall frequency was 1,000. So absolutely, those frequencies reveal, immediately reveal to us that this is an avatar. And we'll talk about two other ones beings that we revealed that had identical frequencies in every aspect. Health he viewed through the lens of 1,000. Finances, 400. <laughs> <Cre laughs> There's still part that he had to experience in this, in this dimension that wasn't a thousand, but that's fascinating. And 400 is the frequency of reason, right? So he had to employ his reasoning skills. Creativity, 1,000. So again, I always say creativity is all about what inspires you. When you feel inspired, right, how do you channel this information that comes through? And at a thousand, you become a pure vessel of information, right, where there is absolutely no resistance. And it's interesting because I believe we've done a couple of people throughout our history who were not necessarily avatars, but who have brought this kind of creative essence. And one of them was Leonardo da Vinci. So Leonardo da Vinci had 1,000 frequency in his creativity. Just fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, channeling the information at that frequency of 1,000, but also putting that into practice, right? right. Materializing it. Uh, and, and that is the, the critical element for the aspect of creativity. Mm -hmm. right? Not just having the creative ideas, but <laughs> making it. And just bring it to fruition. It's fascinating, right? Like you think about... Leonardo da Vinci, right? He brought so much futuristic, creative aspects. Some of them are war-related aspects, right? In into like a couple of hundred years pre years previously to when it was actually fully manifested, right? So you you wonder like, did he go into those wormholes? Uh, mm -hmm. 
right, to to retrieve this information and then bring it out. But anyway, for Hermes, it's the same, the thousand frequency. But again, he has this avatar or enlightened being that just came to infuse humanity with gifts, right, with whatever information he brought. Relationships he also viewed through the lens of enlightenment, 1,000. Personal growth. This is a fascinating part because when we first read the, the first being at those frequencies, we were like, oh, what does that mean? So for Hermes, personal growth is zero and we realize it's a zero point field. This is where, aha, uh -huh, information, right? So it's really just bringing the information out and then transmuting it. So zero for personal growth. Where creation and destruction happen. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. It's kind of like, from 1,000, the next level is one, kind of. <laughs> Zero, sorry. It could be. Uh -huh. yes. And there's absolutely that contrast that you see. I would call it also yin and yang because it's fascinating. We've read shadow players, right? So, of course, this is not a shadow player. And there's some aspect, aspects in shadow players that when we started incorporating the IQ, EQ, SQ, and AQ. And you see, for example, somebody who is a 50 frequency, they have really high SQ. SQ has to do with social quotient. And it has to do with your level of magnetism. So what's happening, for example, with people who have who are shadow players, they use their magnetism at a high frequency, like 500, 400, and people are drawn to that. And they're like, oh my God, yes, you are my teacher. Yes, you are my world leader, right? And this is how they lure people in with that SQ. And also IQ, a lot of them have high, high IQ levels. So this is a fascinating part, that there's always that yin and yang that exists and, we'll t and the polarity that exists in all, and we'll talk about the hermetic principles also of what we've discovered, because it's very much relevant to that. Now, philanthropy for Hermes was 1,000, so he shared information from absolutely enlightened place. I knew you would love this, because your entire work is astrology and Babylonian astrology, and I'm always fascinated, like, how... how fascinating it is because it's a system like how could a human being really come up with such a system right <coughs> of looking into the stars the constellations and and relating it to what's happening in the world so it had to be somebody who was outside of the system looking in to bring it into people well, right he was an avatar <laughs> how else was he was an avatar. Mm -hmm. that's right that makes sense <laughs> yes so intuition Intuition is also 1,000 for Hermes. And we look at four aspects of intuition, the clairaudience, clairsentience, clairvoyance, and claircognizance, and they're all at a frequency of 1,000. Again, that pure channel of divine that's coming in, and he's just giving this information to humanity. Unbelievable. All those clairaudience, you're just like a walking Akashic record, you know, everything on the second. Whatever you want to know, future past, you just know, wow, okay. Amazing. There's no resistance, right? And then, of course, we look at the IQ. So the IQ frequency is 1,000. Again, he knows he can retrieve the information and apply it. Unbelievable. EQ, emotional intelligence, 1,000. SQ, social quotient, which has to do with magnetism. And it's a frequency of 700. Again, this enlightened magnetic presence. So no wonder that there are records of him in history. And I wonder how the histor historical references... Uh, reference him. Was he a magnetic being, right? Were people attracted or, you know, did he have a lot of impact and influence? I'm sure he did because to this day people are using his system, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And the AQ has to do with adversity quotient. How did he deal with being challenged when he was being challenged in this matrix, in this dimension? How did he do? And for him, he approached it through the lens of love. 500. And it's fascinating because most people that we read have the AQ between 50 and 100. That's the most common one. Either people disconnect, disassociate, and kind of like, okay, I'm, this is too much for me. I'm out of here. Or fear kicks in, which AQ and both SQ are uh, patterns that we inherit from our parents, right? It's by observation. We are imprinted with these, uh, with these patterns. So, but he embraced it with love. So they slap him and he says, come here, brother. <laughs> yes, yes. And Alejandro will dive into percentages with Hermes. Yes. Yeah, it is amazing. Well, avatar meaning 
a fully integrated being, right? Someone that is experiencing the 1000 frequency. There was the, the incarnated at 1000, was born at 1000, and the overall frequency is 1000 as well. And when it comes to in the joy, how much he was enjoying the role that he played in this reality as Hermes, and it was 100%. Yep. In the ego, yeah. how much he was attached to thought, to information, it was 17%. Wow, that's very low. Mm -hmm. And how much of that was the inferior version of the ego? It was 50%. So no, it was very balanced. So 50% inferior, 50% superior. So pretty much they cancel each other out. <laughs> In the now, how much he was in the now, in the present moment, and it was 100%. <laughs> Integrity, 100%. This is how loyal and faithful he was to his truth, right? 100%. Integrity to self, 100%. And integrity to others, 100% as well. Mm -hmm. Self-awareness, 100%. Clarity, 100%. Aligning with divine purpose. We like, we like to guess what that <laughs> might <Yes>. be. <laughs> 100%. Yes, aligning with divine purpose, 100%. And aligning with personal purpose, also 100%. Compassion, 100%. Empathy, 100%. And that's all we measured for this being since it's not... Uh, well, normally we also world. measure, right, yes. uh, energy purity in dimensions, but because he's no longer... Well, he's not present in physical reality, reality at the moment. We abstain from doing mm -hmm. that. Not that we can not do it, but we abstain from doing it. So here's an interesting thing, and I, I think this is an invitation for us. It was a very clear... Uh, aha moment uh, because there's two other beings that we've revealed in our community where the, the, literally the numbers are identical and we said this is an absolute indication that there are beings that are coming in whether two at a time one at a time they're infusing humanity with information and then, do you want to take a guess who those beings were I know <laughs> you already know of course you know <laughs> so one of them uh, I'll start with with, because she's a female and it's Mary Magdalene. We've done a whole episode actually on uh, Mary Magdalene. And it, it's, it's interesting how historically she's been erased or portrayed as something, as a shadow being, but she was actually exactly identical numbers as Hermes. I actually wrote a whole blog about her about a month ago, right? And, and the other one was her partner and her partner was Yashua or Emmanuel, Jesus Christ, exactly. Identical, identical frequencies on every level. We couldn't believe it. I mean, it just blew my mind when we read Hermes. I'm like, wow. Would they be like twin flames? <laughs> I th yeah, we believe that uh, Mary Magdalene <coughs> and Yashua absolutely were twin flames. They were representations of the divine masculine and divine feminine. It would be fascinating fascinating to see if Hermes had during yeah. his incarnations. If Very fascinating in anthroposophy, which is spiritual science. Uh, uh, the, they say that actually Hermes is previous incarnation of the Jesus uh, soul. So if they're the same vibration, now it just makes sense. It's, if anyone oh. thinks anthroposophy, they can read that. And oh, wow. Thousands, mm -hmm. That's the Rudolf Steiner doctrine. But uh, he, he had ability to see past, future, and he was speaking that then Zoroaster was another incarnation later on. You can check Zoroaster. Uh, Zoroaster, Zoroaster is the same name, but he says that Hermes is, um, was uh, the same being, the soul essence that after that went. So that's fascinating that you measured the same frequency. It measured, exactly. It's, it's unbelievable. And what I want to know if Hermes had a female counterpart mm -hmm. at that time. I don't know if there's anywhere in those texts for us to also check. This would be fascinating also to see. When there is a huge mission of an avatar or a human being still in the development, 
only then they're allowed to incarnate with their twin flames because only then the merging of the female and male beginning, not necessarily even sexually, but the merging together, only then can you, can you really kind of like the double helix of the DNA give the most powerful manifestation. And I, I, I would imagine. <laughs> you probably <laughs> did, yes. So anyway, this is, this really, you know, for us, actually someone requested in our community yes. for us to read Hermes and I didn't know much about it at all. And when we read it, we're like, oh my God, I want to research everything about it right now. Yes, it makes total sense what you just said, mm -hmm. uh, Lada, because then you're able to activate the feminine and the masculine energy to the fullest, you know, so it flows freely. Yeah, and, and they kind of enhance their chakras together as well. You see how, like, I watched how the energy from the certain chakras, female chakras are the ones where there is, you know, the breast is the stronger female chakra because they come out, the belly comes out is a stronger female chakra. While for men here, the Adam's apple, the throat chakra is stronger. Uh, the, for women, it's the heart chakra, the breast. For men also, the upper belly, which is the, the third Solar chakra. Plexus. Yeah. yeah bigger belly here while the women have bigger lower belly uh, and um, and how penis is the lower chakra for the man is stronger has more energy usually than women while women don't have <laughs> penises so how like they each feed the, so each other chakra is one is stronger so they feed into each other like that so when you have the twin flame it's kind of like enhances even double your energy maybe that's why you and the country found each other <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, based on our astrology that you did, apparently so. <laughs> yes. So now let's go into the gift that Hermes gave to humanity, which of course, uh, we had no idea what it was. I actually ordered a book now on seven <laughs> hermetic principles because it just blew my mind how aligned it is with everything uh, of how perhaps we're viewing the world, right? So let's go into the overall frequency of the actual book, the seven hermetic principles, and then we'll go into each hermetic principle, okay? So the seven hermetic principles, overall frequency is 700, which is enlightenment. Now we also, so we measured one number as far as frequency, and then we looked at percentages. So integrity of seven hermetic principles is 100%. Clarity, 96%, alignment with divine and a divine purpose is 100% in alignment with its mission, right? Because it's not personal purpose, it's mission. Also 100%. Transparency of seven hermetic principles is 100%. So it's fascinating. This is, I would say, a very important piece of information for those people that are seeking to understand not only themselves, but the reality, the nature of reality, and what makes our reality from a much wider lens. So now we'll go into the first principle, the principle of mentalism. And this was interesting for us to also look because some of the, you'll see some of the numbers are really high and others are a little lower, but still quite high, right? And, and again, this is an invitation, I think, for all of us to sit with it, to contemplate, to see what shows up. Okay, so principle of mentalism is a frequency of 1,000. Well, what so again, is it like a sentence for you? The uh, principle? <laughs> yes, the principle of basically mentalism, there is a supreme mind, and everything is a manifestation of the supreme mind. From a first-person perspective, the mental plane is experienced simply as thought, insight, intuition, and reason. But wisdom of how this plane corresponds with other unseen or causal planes tells us that there may be more to our thoughts than we perceive. And that's a frequency of 1,000. Mm -hmm. So the principle of mentalism is 1,000. Amazing. Integrity of this principle is at 100%. Clarity, 100%. Alignment with divine purpose, 100%. Alignment with its mission, 100% transparency, 100%. So I think this also holds a key to the nature of our reality, yeah. that we're dreaming each other into being. And that we are creators of our own reality as well, right? We create with our thoughts. Mm -hmm. yes. well, exactly what's coming out, what's been happening in the last 15 years, the law of attraction people are rediscovering. 
ancient. And I'm sure it's all based on these principles. So this is going to be a, just a great place, I think, to dive into, to explore even further. Yes. Mm -hmm. The next is the principle of correspondence. The overall frequency is 600, which is the level of peace. Integrity, 91%. Clarity, 95%. Alignment with divine purpose, 100%. Alignment with its mission, 100%. Transparency, 99%. And then maybe you can give us a sentence or two. About and yeah, this is the, the um, this is a known sentence. I will say, as above, so below. Eh? Yeah, as below, so above. <laughs> as <Both> astrology. Uh, <laughs> within, so without, as without, so within. Right, but it, I find it fascinating that it's six hundred. That it's not a thousand. That means there's something else for us to explore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That it's, this principle embodies the truth that there is always a correspondence between the laws and phenomena of various planes that manifest as being in life. Grasping this principle is what allows one to deduce the hidden solutions to problems by looking at what exists a layer above and below the problem to infer the pattern and shadow nature of what is in between. Mm -hmm. So pretty much you look at it from all angles. And, and I think it's hard as a human being. yourself right? to just one, uh, uh, viewing it from one angle only, right? Mm -hmm. Be open. Yeah, that's the key is to question. And that everything. Rest, it might be due to some emotional issue within and Figuring it on different levels and corresponds within the yeah. yeah, and I think, you know, it's important also with everything that is happening around the world, we have so much digital communication and information. And it's important to always look at all of the angles, all of the sides to hear what it is the opposing view has to say, because it will also help us become more clear. If we're only looking through our own lens, our own belief systems, we're limiting ourselves. So it's important to look at as much information as possible and collect as much data as possible. And the most important thing is to tune in. That's it. <laughs> and pay attention to the way you feel when you're mm -hmm. being exposed to that information, yes. whatever information is coming your way, right? Mm -hmm. to, and to pay attention to the way you feel. So if it resonates, then feel free to entertain it until, until no longer resonates. But always pay attention to the way it makes you feel because that is uh, letting you know how aligned you are with, with the ultimate truth mm -hmm. of who you truly are, right? All right, the next one is the principle of vibration. And I love this because this one is actually something that quantum physicists have discovered or have uncovered, I should say, in the last century and that is that nothing rests everything moves everything vibrates so of course we talk about vibration right so the frequency of this principle is 1000 integrity 100 percent clarity 100 percent alignment with divine purpose 100 percent and alignment with the mission of this principle is also 100 percent transparency is 100 percent Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes. That, that's your sphere because you're working with vibrations. You have 100% in. <laughs> yes, it's, it's completely in alignment uh, with what quantum physicists are showing. And this is an absolute, I would say it's an absolute truth for at least the nature of our reality, right? Because we're looking into the thousand frequency. We're looking into how our reality is shaped, right? Because other realities perhaps are similar but different, but we're looking at what Hermes brought to humanity and how it relates to our reality. All right, the next one. Yes, the principle of polarity. Overall frequency 500, the level of love. Integrity, 93%. Clarity, 93%. Aligning with divine purpose, 98%. Aligning with its mission, 97%. Transparency, 91%. This is the, everything is dual. Everything has pulse. Everything has its pair of opposites. Mm -hmm. 
like and unlike are the same. Opposites are identical in nature, but different in degree, as we all are, right? We're just identical, identical in nature, but different in degree. And that is tied to uh, whatever level of consciousness the, the, they were experiencing or the frequency they were experiencing. It says, uh, extremes meet. All truths are but half-truths. All paradoxes may be reconciled. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So pretty much the fourth principle embodies the truth that everything has its pair of opposites. This and also, so, right, also something we talk about, that there's no good or bad, because everything is important. Everything, everything and everyone plays an important role. From a very higher perspective, yeah. Yes, That's from true. a very high perspective. Bad, but on a, when you look from higher, higher, whatever, whoever created this is using both and created both. So they, they, yes. <laughs> yes, it says we're all one. Therefore, we're all connected, and then we are all experiencing everything. Mm -hmm. What you uh, what your experience is is feeding the universe or source or God that information, right? That I could be seeking the same, and therefore I have access to that too. And and you know, people that are having a low vibrational frequency experience, they are also contributing to the source for those that are seeking that information to have access to and experience it as well, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, the next one is the principle of rhythm. Everything flows out and in, everything has its tides, all things rise and fall. The pendulum swing manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates. So. The frequency of that principle is 1,000. Wow. Integrity, 100%. Clarity, 100%. Alignment with divine purpose, 100%. And alignment with its mission, mission of the principle of rhythm is 100%. Transparency, 100%. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we are not, we're not in the business of pendulums, but that's, those are the real numbers too. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying that the more your painful situation is now and, and difficult, the higher the joys will be after that, and uh, mm -hmm. the higher the positive things after that. So I guess <laughs> be yes. when you're in the darkest moment, know that if it's really something really dark, that something really light follows after that. And if anything, imagine if your whole life was like me in the middle. <laughs> no ups or downs. <laughs> yes, yes. You're absolutely right. And it says that everything flows, right? Out and in. Everything has its tides. I like that. And what's interesting is, you know, we've measured so many pe people, right, in our community, of course, that had reached out for their vibrational frequency lifetime analysis. And this is a fascinating part, is most human beings go, I would say every human being that we've looked at goes through these ups and downs. And it's through the down is when the person is holding their biggest potential for growth. And I would look at what's happening in the world and what's happening for our human collective as, as an opportunity for all of us to really have this high jumping platform to where we're all gonna fly and fly high. So let's keep our focus on that, right? That the human collective is, is definitely going to rise. And uh, well, we've, we're, been, we've been in the um, below the 200s for thousands of years, so it's time. <laughs> now we time. It's time. Come on. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh, definitely. It's about time. Now the next is the principle of cause and effect. The overall frequency is 1000. Integrity 100%. Clarity 100%. Aligning with divine purpose 100%. Aligning with its mission 100%. And transparency is 100%. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Another. Hmm? This is uh, the principle 
principle of cause and effect. Uh, every cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. Everything happens according to law. Chance is but a name for law, not recognized. There are many planes of causation, but nothing escapes the law. Fascinating. You know, my dad always said to me, just always wish good to people because that will come back to you, right? And, and it, uh, to me, it always rings true, right? Just catch yourself whenever you're able to catch your thoughts, catch your patterns, um, because whatever you're wishing or even the things you say to yourself have an impact in a massive way to, to create the ripple effects, right? To, to the world, to, to impact the collective, and of course, to impact yourself. So, Someone yeah. said this once, uh, the life is like a restaurant. You cannot leave uh, without paying, <laughs> without paying the bill. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Everyone has to pay the checkout. So at one point or another, right? We might as well make it beautiful and meaningful. Okay. The principle of gender. So let me read to you a little bit about that. And that is gender is in everything. Everything has its masculine and feminine principles. Gender manifests on all planes. Now, the frequency of that is 500, which is love. Integrity of the principle of gender is 97%. Clarity is 90%. Alignment with divine purpose, 98%. And alignment with its mission, 97%. Transparency, 91%. So I would say this is also the principle of the yin and the yang, right? that they all exist within each other. So perhaps there's something else that we are not aware of to explore this principle. So if it's at 500, that means mm, there's something else. Something else. We haven't been given the full picture. So what I've noticed that the two, that the kind of polarity gender, uh, in and yang, and the polarity principle, they're probably a law not like 1,000 because they only matter here in the material. Because once you're... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Makes uh, sense. You're going up, there is uh, like... <laughs> and uh, gender disappear and uh, all of that, I guess, or probably in a very high level, not immediately when you leave the body because there are probably 10 more levels after, but probably yeah. that matters here while the others, they seem to be like ultimate for any kind of reality, the ultimate truth even beyond ours. I would think this, I don't know. Yes. Yeah, no, it makes sense. It makes sense. Definitely. And 500 represents flow too, like you mentioned, right? The flow of, of, uh, of feminine and, and masculine energy. Yes. Yeah, as, as, as one. So this is really, I would say it's an invitation to, to go deeper into Hermes' work and perhaps also the work that you're doing and some of the things that you're sharing. I think it's an invitation for all of us to explore these principles further. And I actually was wondering if this is where the Kabbalah also stems from, the study of Kabbalah, right? Because there's some similarities from what we've been reading and looking into. And I thought, hmm, I wonder if he was also the father of uh, the Kabbalah. Well, I, I believe that if these are universal principles, like everyone who is enlightened should be able to channel them into their religion or into their whatever teaching they have. So uh, I yeah. guess Everyone who is born closer to enlightenment would, would feel them in their blood, in their soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed that. Yes. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Lara. It's but always a pleasure. If anyone wants to subscribe to Elena and Alejandro's uh, weekly updates, you can see thousands of people, celebrities, famous people, events, even products, medical procedures, they all have vibration, banks, name it, whatever you want. I just love their podcast. It's not a podcast, but it's a, it's a video. Yes. And uh, even capels. And every time there is like something that is very popular and trendy, they always, whatever events and people, they've covered everything you want to know. <laughs> <laughs> no yes. It's like when Elena is like, oh, you know what we discovered? Oh, and, and like your life is such a, like you're like little kids playing and always getting so excited for everything you discover. <laughs> There's so much. <laughs> yes. 
Well, that's exactly what it feels like. It feels like we're walking into a candy store for those that love candy. Um, and it's just, it's a wonderland, you know, for us. And it's a wonderland, I would say, for our community. So, of course, if people are just joining for the first time, no, there's so many episodes to watch because we have a backlog of the library. <clears throat> and then weekly, we have weekly discussions with our community where actually everyone will turn their camera on and we'll have live discussions. And then, of course, sometimes with people who need healing and we're there for each other as well in difficult and challenging times. I know a couple of weeks ago we did uh, World Peace Meditation together uh, we've had people who are undergoing surgeries and we've prayed for them. So it's a truly beautiful, meaningful community where it's beyond just the frequencies. We go really, really deep. And all of the episodes that we put together, actually most of them are as a result of what our community members are requesting. Yes. So we're all learning, right? We're learning. We're like, wow, I've never heard of it. Thank you. Yeah, because you can't know everything, but you have like a group of hundreds of people and everyone brings, so it's like community. What you, what you always check is what the community wants. And by the way, I'm putting a link below this video, guys, in the description for anyone who wants to go and check uh, Elena and Alejandro's community. Plus, do you still do personal readings? Yes, yes, we, stu we still do vibrational frequency analysis and lifetime. And for those people that are members, they all receive like 15% off on all the vibrational analysis and also all the digital products as well. So mm -hmm. people definitely have a benefit of being in the community. And for the first time last week, we actually got to meet our members in person because we held you know, our first course and it was such a... few a of them, not all of them. Not, no, well, it was a group of 20, but it's so special because everyone has been so deprived and, you know, being on Zoom or being, you know, online that it's so nice to connect. It was live. So, so you, you taught your, you, you taught your uh, process and your method to 20 students. Oh, yes. Wow. It was so nice. Oh, my gosh. We were like blissing out <laughs> and people are like, oh, well, when can we do it again? So now we're planning another date for those that have completed to, to meet again because people are just really, and we realize it too, like how much we just love and want that sense of community. We want to hug each other and, and share and feel. the full blown connection. Yes. Right? And also be around like-minded people. And that's the biggest gift is to be like, we realize like, okay, we have our people mm -hmm. and we love them and they love us. And we just feel so, so appreciative of all of it. So, yes. Yes. And we hope to hug you too when you come to <laughs> Florida. To Florida. <laughs> to Florida. <laughs> yes. Florida for a few months to try it out. I, I've literally forgotten what it is to have a. Uh, for, for five years the baby's pregnancies and, and like I, I think I'm, I've become a social autistic <laughs> socially <laughs> I'm afraid to hide I stay at home on it it's like some of <laughs> kind of, I pretend like uh, I'm like <laughs> it's ridiculous yeah I mean it's so easy to to be a hermit I think and you know for us too like our nature is Pisces uh, so, and the cancer for me, like all this cancer in my chart, I just want to be a hermit, right? But then it's so nice. But like when we came out, I was like, wow. I said to Alejandro, this is like having a party. And he's like, well, it's not a party. I'm like, for me, that's a party. <laughs> 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 we're hugging, we're talking. And it was just so beautiful. So. Well, happy birthday to both of you, by the way. I told oh, you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> First was back to so Asking you, you, you both ageless, so no point asking you, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Thank so you, man. We, we, we hope to remain uh, the same for another 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, we'll create, a, eventually, I think we're going to be able to create our own avatar, right? Uh, digital. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want that, but okay. <laughs> you mean the one that doesn't change? Right. Yeah, have you seen those clips with Tom Cruise? There's a guy who's doing it. And I'm going, wow. I know, that amazing. freaks me out. I'm like, uh, no. That's People good. will have to see me age gracefully, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> oh, yeah, you your avatars and you don't age at all, you know? <laughs> yeah, but then when people meet you in person, they'll be shocked. They're like, that's you <laughs> right well well yeah they'll think we're well many 
I would say not many, let's say just few uh, real estate agents, you know, they, they promote themselves with a picture they took uh, 30 years ago and then when you meet them, okay, wait a minute, uh, is, are you the same person? <laughs> I called yesterday. <laughs> Alina wants to say hello. Yes. She also wants to be a part of it. Lately she's been wanting to be a part of a part of our <laughs> our community. <laughs> she's very patient, but it gets to a point to her. She starts leaking our hands and <laughs> she's like, okay, pay attention to me now. To be carried. <laughs> <laughs> She, she feels it's higher vibration around you, so <laughs> in the community, so she wanna hang there. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Well, thank you so much. So much beautiful family. Looking forward to see you again with new insights. Always fascinating information coming from you. Thank you everyone for joining us. And if you have any interesting questions for the next session, we can do write them underneath in the comments. Maybe I can ask Elena Alejandro to check it out for us. Thank you. Yes. Bye. Thank bye. You. <laughs> bye. bye.